In the news tonight, full deaths of fully vaccinated people explained. Covid battle requires global effort. And islanders ignoring Covid safe protocols. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Full of Nakafiji. The Ministry of Health has explained why it has classified the death of three fully vaccinated people as non-COVID deaths. These individuals are the first fully vaccinated Fijians to succumb to the virus. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says there is a percentage of population who fall in this category because their immune system is still not strong enough. Apani Sawangai Randovu reports. From the beginning, it was clear the vaccine is not 100% foolproof, despite the high protection rate. The permanent secretary says people with serious illnesses will still be at risk. The maximum protection rate is 92%. And uh, of course, 92% is not 100%. Dr. Fong explains response differs for those in this category. In this group are people who have comorbidities. The comorbidities have ranged from uh, ischemic heart disease, morbid obesity, uh, severe unstable di uh, diabetes, to leukemia. Their level of immune response will not be good as those who do not have those comorbidities. Fijians say the vaccine still offers hope. I think uh, people are sick too. They need to have jab to protect themselves. I'm sickly, but I've taken both my doses and I feel fine. Personally, for me, the vaccine is safe and I feel fine despite my AIDS. So in summary, what I'm getting at is that the fully vaccinated are more protected from the serious effects of COVID-19 than those who are half vaccinated or not vaccinated. To date, 311 COVID-19 positive patients died from the serious medical conditions that they had before they contracted COVID-19. Some had already received their first dose, but are non-COVID-19 deaths. Apinisong Grandovu, FBC News. Battling COVID-19 requires a global response as no country can do it alone. Prime Minister Voring Mbani Marama, while receiving 2.7 million KN95 masks in Suva this morning, highlighted that cooperation is critical in protecting people from the virus. Kritika Kumar reports. The Prime Minister says while this consignment is valued at $1.1 million, the protection offered by the mask and lives it helps save is priceless. These masks, which offer medical-grade uh, protection, are testament to the solidarity that binds our global Fijian family. This uh, shipment has arrived to Fiji from the Reach for your uh, future foundation in Australia, which is led by our proud son of Fiji, Mr. Ganesh Chan. Beni Marama says Fiji is well ahead of schedule to meet the vaccination target of 80% adults by October end. As we achieve new threshold for the full vaccination of our adult population, we will carefully roll back some of our health protection measures and eventually reopen our borders. The Australian Deputy High Commissioner to Fiji believes global solidarity is vital. As Fiji continue to uh, battle outbreaks, working together, our collaboration is the way to move forward. And so I'm, I'm very, very pleased that we are continuing our support to support our Fiji and Bavale overcome this outbreak. Beni Marama has also acknowledged the Reach for Your Future Foundation based in Australia and Wallabista Samu Kirevi for supporting Fiji's fight against COVID-19. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The reluctance to accept COVID-19 public health measures in maritime islands is a major challenge for visiting teams. Health Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainabete says they've had a few incidents in Malolo and Yasawa where villagers are not complying with directives. Kelly Vadala reports provincial administrators and village head, headmen have had to be called in to assist. Health inspectors deployed to affected islands can issue notices if villages fail to comply with COVID regulations, which is becoming a concern. We really like the, the public to realize that uh, they, they have an authority under law to issue the infringement notices that have been put out uh, by the Public Health Amendment Act and uh, other legal notices that have been published there. 
With more cases recorded in Kandavu, Malolo and Yasawa, village authorities have been called in to help with operations. In Malolo uh, and also in Yasawa, in acceptance of the public health safe measures, but uh, certainly the Rokos and also the DOs have uh, been working hand in hand with us. Eh? The ministry says the good part is that villages with COVID cases are taking public health measures seriously. The village headsmen in each of the village in Kandahar have voluntarily locked down their village from outside people. So they're trying to keep all, restrict all the movements within. In the coming days, the whole of government community engagement and response team is also planning to visit villages in Yasawa. They will conduct surveillance and testing, awareness sessions and attend to immediate health and social needs. Kelly Vathala, FBC News. Fiji has to date received almost 310,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines through the COVAX facility. UN Resident Coordinator Sanaka Samharasinha says the full allocation for Fiji via the COVAX facility has now been delivered. Kritika Kumar reports. Sanaka Samharasinha says certain factors will decide whether more doses will be made available to us. Uh, in the next uh, round, when we look at the global supply and demand, uh, if there is a, a possibility to get the deal, and, and a need, in fact, for Fiji to get more doses. He adds contributions made bilaterally have enabled Fiji to access COVID-19 vaccines for its targeted population. The moment, as you're aware, the generous contributions that are being made bilaterally, initially by India and subsequently also by Australia and New Zealand, um, there are quite a lot of doses of vaccines coming in um, to Fiji. Vaccination Task Force Head Dr. Rachel Devi is urging Fijians to get vaccinated as they have enough vaccines available for all eligible Fijians. Early as possible get your first jab because uh, the more you delay your first jab, the uh, more you delay your second jab and we really need this level of protection for everyone. Australia, New Zealand, India, the US and Japan are some of the countries that have donated AstraZeneca vaccines to Fiji. The U.S. also provided 150,000 doses of Moderna vaccine, which is being used to vaccinate the elderly and pregnant mothers. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And to tonight's COVID-19 update, Fiji recorded 290 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. 128 cases are from the west, 137 from the central division and 25 from the east. Eight people have died from COVID-19 from August 27th to the 1st of this month. Fiji has recorded 46,936 cases since April this year. There are now 17,124 active cases with 29,067 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 504. The vaccination campaign also continues. In the latest update, 560,336 people or 95.9% of the population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 275,072 people or 47.6% of eligible Fijians are now fully vaccinated. The five most vaccinated areas include Mba, Rewa, Nanronga and Naitasiri, which have achieved 100% first jabs administered. Next is Nandi. And Shalvin Singh and his mother from Penang, Raki Raki, are now fully vaccinated. Up ahead, surveillance beefed up in Maritime Islands. And mother supports family, creates jobs for 15. The Fiji police force continues to beef up manpower and capabilities to track down Fijians in outer islands who breach maritime travel restrictions. Commissioner of Police Brigadier General Sitiveni Gilio says they've received reports of people in Kandavu making unauthorized trips and allegedly transporting, uh, transporting drugs to Vitilevu. Details with Josiah Nanunga. Police officers who were deployed to Kandavu will also be tracking down those who are engaging in illegal activities. There are um, uh, uh, routes, uh, traditional routes, or maybe uh, known routes that uh, that drug uh, 
uh, drugs is moved along. We've acquired new capabilities, and uh, and that's what we need to uh, to close up those gaps uh, where the landing sites uh, of those coming in from the islands need to be uh, interdicted. Matani Tikino Tabuki, Sailasa Botia Makandavo, says they are working closely with police to halt illegal drug activities in the district. I have been uh, liaising closely with the Fiji police. I have also received reports of some villages involving themselves in this illegal act. Not mincing his words, Giliho is reiterating to the members of the force that the time of giving warnings has long gone. People continue to be irresponsible. And we call on that responsibility again. We, everybody must have a sense of responsibility that we deal with this issue together. And then that, that freedom will come. The force will continue to take its cue from the health ministry to assist with the COVID response efforts in Kandavo, Malolo and the Asawas. Chose Yenanuga, FBC News. The Pacific Eye Institute has had to resort to telehealth services to reach patients during this pandemic Consultant ophthalmologist Dr. Luisa Vikamatana says some services have had to be ceased. Koroi Tandulala reports the institute was assisted with mobile phones and laptops today. The Pacific Eye Institute has implemented necessary measures to ensure they are in compliance with the COVID-19 protocols. We had to cut down on our services um, for the safety of the patients and also us maintaining our COVID safe measures. So um, we had to stop our routine um, services. So um, with that came challenges as well. Eh? The consultant ophthalmologist says the assistance provided by Vodafone today will greatly assist them in reaching out to patients. We know that uh, telemedicine exists. Uh, so we uh, reached out uh, through PECAIS, reached out to Vodafone uh, for assistance. This is uh, something that we are doing uh, with our multiple NGOs uh, across Fiji. So this is just one of the initiatives where we are handing out over some equipment worth about $6,000, uh, which is laptop stabilizer, etc., which will help them to ensure that they are able to contact their, their patients. The Vodafone's chief marketing officer says this is part of the various initiatives to assist those in need during this pandemic. FBC News. The government is committed to ensuring that every Fijian is able to connect to the internet and take advantage of the many many benefits of modern technology. Minister for Communications Aya Sayed Kayum has told a meeting of the small island developing states that access to e-services is critical moving forward. He says there have been there have been various incentives and tax holidays announced to attract more investment in ICT as well. We have, for example, a, pro, a, a program at the moment calling the Connect the Unconnected. There has been a particular project in the northern part of, of Fiji where we're connecting about 40 different locations, you know, schools with the Wi-Fi hotspots around, schools where there's a community living around the school, uh, nursing stations, etc. A mother of three who started a business, Lewa Nimbole Cultural Collection, a year ago, is now providing jobs to 15 people. Anaseni Lewavai is one of the many who lost her job due to the pandemic. However, instead of sitting around and waiting, she started a Masi business. Philippe Naikaso has more. The 48-year-old mother of three says her decision to venture into Masi business has helped her support her family during this difficult time. You know, I thought of other kind of business to start to carry on with my life and I thought to go back and uh, do something that we are known of eh, as uh, we are mercy makers. Not only has it been successful, but she is also now helping 15 other people provide for their families. Lewa Vai is now inspiring youths to venture into mercy making. Majority of my market is uh, going internationally, or even um, people, I mean, uh, customers from overseas, they buy for our locals, eh? for the, the, the um, functions that are held locally. One of her staff, an 18-year-old student from Natambua High School, says this working environment is very educational for him. I spent wisely. I was able to buy some stuff and send it to my mother who is in the village in Watulele. Lewa Vai, originally from Watulele, is also supporting her family in the village. Philippa Naikaso, FBC News.
Coming up in World News, Colorado cops paramedics charged in death of Elijah McCain and later in sports Italian job for the tank. some good news for movie lovers and cinema goers as Damodar Cinemas is already making plans of reopening their cinemas with COVID safe measures in place. Cinemas fell under the category of high risk businesses after a number of COVID cases were identified earlier this year and they are waiting for the green light from relevant authorities. Jeshulal reports overseas cinemas have opted for protocols where fully vaccinated or partially vaccinated patrons are allowed to enter the cinemas. Damodar Cinema says the cinema team is planning to put a submission of interest to open the cinemas under COVID protocols. For us, we are ready from our side. So if we get approval from tomorrow, we will open the cinemas and we will follow the guidelines and we will welcome our patrons and you know our, our employees who were currently not working with. She says they're also in talks of rehiring their staff who are laid off, but the requirement is that all need to be fully vaccinated requirement is the employees they have to be vaccinated to resume work so from our side of course we we are going we we are in touch with our, our employees and and we will uh, follow the procedure that is in place Vinit Chand a former employee of Damodar Cinema says he is hoping to be re-employed again um, I think the management uh, Management is currently recommending all staffs to get fully vaccinated. This cinema house saw a drop in revenue due to COVID-19 and also laid off 90 percent of its staff due to a significant decline in cinema business. Jeshulal, FBC News. Domestic investors are major contributors to the growth of the economy, says Investment Fiji's Acting Chief Executive Kamal Chedi. To support local projects, Investment Fiji's facilitation division assists with a range of service for ease of implementation. Chedi says one of their key services for setup and growth is comprehensive aftercare support. He adds it is encouraging to see local companies putting money back into the economy during these unprecedented times, showing domestic investor confidence and developing our sector-based opportunities. For the first half of 2021, Investment Fiji received over 200 inquiries, which led to a wide range of assistance and local projects being implemented. A number of local projects which are in development or near implementation include wholesale and retail, real estate, housing and tourism. Here are the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar gained against the rising U.S. greenback as well as the other international currencies we cover, but lost ground against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Prices on the commodities market were mixed. Crude oil dropped to close at $68 a barrel. Gold rose to $1,816 per ounce. And silver closed up at $24.21 per ounce. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money market. Good evening. The Australia and New Zealand dollar struck more than two-week highs today, riding off the back of weaker U.S. dollar. The Kiwi dollar is being supported by traders' strong bets on a rate hike in New Zealand next month, while the Aussie dollar got further boost from their upbeat trade figures during the day. Australia's trade balance for July came in at $12.1 billion surplus. Their exports rose 5%, while imports were up 3% on a month-on-month -month basis. However, Australia's growing COVID cases continue to put a cap on the currency's demand. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar came under strong selling pressure on the back of poor U.S. employment-related data this morning. The ADP and National Employment Report showed private payrolls rose only 374,000 in August against 613,000 forecast. The focus is now on the weekly initial jobless claims report for the U.S., which comes out tomorrow morning. Traders will keep a close watch on it to determine the U.S. Federal Reserve's likely policy path. But for now, that's all I have from your HFC Bank. Binaka.
Almost seven tons of dry vegetable seeds of 14 different varieties has been given to the Agriculture Ministry by the Indian government. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says the $1.75 million of seeds have come at a better time. While thanking the Indian government, the minister says Fiji is a small country that may not be able to reciprocate in the same quantum, but Fijians will always have a block support from India. The receipt of seven tons of dry seeds couldn't have been any better time. It boosted our food security works on the ground. We were able to undertake country-wide support for food security and expand our support for commercial and agricultural, uh, export agriculture as well. We in India have been largely successful in coming out of the second wave of the pandemic and we stand in solidarity with our friends here in Fiji to mitigate the challenges arising from this deadly pandemic. That is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, teacher reaping the benefits of farming. Stay with us. Welcome back. The rising sea level as a result of climate change continues to be an issue for villagers in Narikoso, Kandavu. Villager Tevitambola says they continue to plant mangroves on the coastline to avoid erosion. Sanya Nimboila reports. While some villages have moved to higher grounds, David Tambola says they continue to plant mangroves to save their land. We are just trying to plant more mangroves that can hold the sand and soil on our village front bench. Narikoso mother Chisivini Naikini says natural disasters have also affected their coastline. We face challenges during natural disasters due to our geographical location. For us mothers, trying to get our houses in place again is also a major challenge after a disaster. Some families from Narikoso village in Kandavu were relocated last year due to the effects of climate change. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. The uncertain times Fiji is facing has encouraged a teacher to turn to agriculture. With school on a prolonged break, Salesh Chant is using his time venturing into mixed farming and is urging others to follow suit. Eleanor Turangayevu met up with the teacher and files this report. After teaching for 20 years, 43-year-old Salesh Chand is looking at life from a different perspective. We can see that the country's uh, economy is having a crisis here. So just uh, three years back, I thought of uh, devoting myself to, uh, into agriculture to do some investments so that uh, you know, we can uh, contribute towards the country's uh, economy. Acquiring the 25-acre land has widened the horizon for the social studies and geography teacher at Tambia Sanatan College. He has harvested acres of cane and just recently a ton of rice. I try to do some mixed cropping. Eh? We, we have sugarcane plantation, but also I want to do. I'm doing rice uh, farming as well. Just today I, I have harvested about uh, eight bags of uh, rice. Originally from Bulile, Kalambasa, Chand grew up in a farming community. His father, a farmer himself, is encouraging young people to have a backup plan. Uh, our children too. Eh? who are upcoming, they can have a bright future, not to just depend on the uh, other jobs eh, through education, but also get qualified, but also go switch into farming. Eh? According to Chand, agriculture ensures a sustainable livelihood, and with the country in crisis due to COVID-19, people should make the effort to farm, if not for commercial purposes, at least for their own consumption. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. In Q&A tonight, Kritika Kumar speaks with Fiji Cooperative Dairy Limited Chief Executive Kushmendra Prasad on the status of the dairy industry and the challenges it's facing. First of all, what is the current status of the dairy industry? 
or looking at the industry milk supply, milk intake figures, we have noticed as the first quarter, there is a little increase in the milk production. And then this is, uh, this is the colder months. While uh, when we compare the years la last year and before last year, in colder months, milk supply used to decrease uh, as uh, the efficiency for cows. But what we have done, we have supplement with soya meal. Uh, in terms of COVID-19 pandemic, what are some of the challenges that are being faced by the FCDCL? Our team, the extension team, is not able to reach to the farm to provide the outreach activities on the dairy farm level. And also, we are uh, we are finding some difficulties in uh, in getting the farm's uh, records and uh, calf's weight and other uh, nutrition and other testings that we were experimenting on the farms. What could be one main reason for the increase in milk supply from bulk farmers? It is uh, nutrition feeding and uh, supplement feeding is one of the major important thing that uh, contributes to the increase in milk production, supplement feeding and uh, right practices and correcting their basics. And Jamie's here now with sports. And again, good evening in sports tonight. PG Women's Super W team a possibility next season. And Fiji football races against time. Details coming up. With Oceania rugby teams dedicating September as its Women in Rugby Month, the Fiji Rugby Union has some big plans to further boost female participation in the sport. Chief Executive John O'Connor has revealed a possible Fijian and Rua side for next year. But wait, there's more surprises and this time it's for women's rugby. As we're currently in uh, discussions with the uh, Australian Rugby Union to include uh, as the Fiji Sports Commission is ready to assist the Fijiana 15s in hosting a test next year. In June, hopefully, Fiji Rugby will be sorting out the who they're going to compete against. I haven't been advised yet, but the funding's available for that. Discussions are ongoing with teams that have qualified for the World Cup in New Zealand to come over. Uh, there's interest uh, in them coming through Fiji, playing a... Uh, Preparation matches and then uh, moving uh, over to Australia, hopefully by that time. Fiji men's national sevens coach Gareth Baber has attributed much of Fiji's gold medal win at the Tokyo Games to former captain Paula and Rani Sinukula. Rani Sinukula made a hard choice to give up his Olympic journey, but Baber says he was an important component in the team that was molded for Tokyo. Karlaini Tavi has more. Beaver was stuck in a dilemma after Poland Rani Sinkula chose to give up his captaincy role. It was doubt, you know, I was gutted, you know, you know, I was losing my captain at that stage, the guy I'd seen taking us through to the Olympics. And at that stage, don't forget, Cali wasn't back either, you know, so you, I didn't have Cali Nasoko. And when I look at that group, you know, Cali with his knee, and Paula leaving, you know, even at that stage, Jerry, Jerry had been offered, you know, a, a lovely contract in America. Many people have been praised for Fiji's success at the Tokyo Games, and Baba says Ndani Sinkula is one of them. You know, the, the Olympics was a step too far for Paula. Paula had to go and do other things, and his body was getting to a stage where he needed that to happen as well. And, you know, he was part of that journey. The team wouldn't have won if Paula hadn't done what he'd done in that part of that journey. I don't believe in it. I believe it is a full four and a half, five years, and everybody who, in, who invested in that in that period of time was rewarded and like you know i messaged paula i spoke to paula and and said look you know this this is this is part of you as well mate this this is what you after Rani sinukula left it was up to the management to put together a team for the olympics came together as a group and the boys played i know there was a quite a lot of talk you know about them playing as a team but you know what if you're not covering the mileage internationally as a fiji team you got to do it locally you can't train combinations, you've got to play combinations. Now the focus shifts to the Commonwealth Games and the HSBC 7 Series and putting together a new team to take Fiji forward. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Fiji 7's gold medalist Aseli Tuibuaka has signed for Italian-based club Zebre for the 2021-2022 season. 
Fresh out of the Tokyo Olympics, the Namoshi native says he's excited to join a club of uh, Zebra's caliber. In a statement, uh, Zebra Rugby Club President Michele Dalai says they're happy to give the city and the fans an Olympic champion like Tuivuaka. Tuivuaka is expected in Parma in September and will make his international debut for Zebra at the United Rugby Championship and EPCR Challenge Cup. Time is running out for the national football team uh, that needs to begin preparations for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. The Fiji Football Association awaits approval from the Ministry of Health before they can make plans to gather squad members at its uh, football academy in Ba. Venina Rakautanga reports. It will be a race against time as January draws closer. We can start in October or late in November and uh, uh, we will have a good uh, maybe one or two uh, uh, camps before we go into the final uh, camp before the World Cup qualifiers. Fiji FA Chief Executive Mohamed Yusuf says all they can do now is wait. We only have three, two, three months to prepare for World Cup qualifiers and we need approval to, to get our team in bar and train in a bubble uh, with uh, the gates closed and nobody will enter the place and all that. Yusuf says the return to play protocol is designed in such a way that it won't be an inconvenience to the authorities. The program and the training camps will not be any burden to the to the health work health ministry in terms of resources and for the frontline workers being engaged. We will do everything ourselves. The 2022 FIFA World Cup qualification will be held in January with a venue yet to be confirmed. Venina Rakautanga, FPC Sports. Team Fiji Paralympic coach Freddy Fatiaki is impressed with the performance of Fiji's two representatives at the Tokyo Games. Inoshi Matia finished 10th, throwing a season best of 42.55 meters in his Paralympic debut. And while Iosefo Rakesa couldn't compete in the shot put on Monday, he remains focused on his next event. The men's uh, javelin F41. For the first time, I would say we are doing uh, with the current uh, distance that they have and the uh, environment that they are in. So uh, we do look forward for them coming back in to Paris in the next three years' time. Enforcing the right protocols at uh, club level is a crucial step for Bowls Fiji. While members are receiving their jabs, uh, the worry lies around the safe management of the clubs and the crowd when bowlers return to the greens. Tali Materakula has more. COVID safe procedures have been mapped for all clubs, its members and guests. How do we manage visitors, guests that are, that are coming into the club? We need protocols around or procedures around how do we ask for evidence of the vaccination? What should that evidence be? Is it the Ministry of Health card or some other evidence of vaccination? A no jab, no play policy is also in place. We will um, uh, politely advise that member or bowler that they are not able to partake in the game until they are um, of a mind to vaccinate. And when they are fully vaccinated, they can return to their club and they can return to playing the game. Super Bowling, being one of the most popular and crowded club, has taken the lead to ban unvaxxed guests from entering. Stand on COVID, we will just have to go with what the government said about uh, vaccination. So if you don't get two jabs, then you won't be allowed at the club. The decision is on respective clubs to implement protocols that will see the safe return of bowlers and members on the greens. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. Fiji continues to impress in the 2021 World Chess Olympiad. The Fiji team registered convincing wins against Bahrain and Guam and drew with Maldives. Fiji Chess President Hilda Kunau says it's uh, pleasing to see under-18 players like uh, Ruder and Tanvi Prasad uh, play well under world championship pressure. Team captain Goru Arvind says uh, they're happy they started the tournament well with upsets over higher-ranked Pakistan and Oman. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and Wonderful Elephant Orphanage records rare twin birth. This and more after the break. Looking at the weather today, a trough of low pressure with the associated cloud and showers affects the Fiji group until Saturday. 
Now to the west, cloudy and humid with intervals of showers. Eastwards from Pekhaba to Suva, mostly cloudy with light showers throughout the day. In the north, mostly cloudy with a couple of showers this afternoon. Places we will be checking out are Singatoka, Nandi and Suva. All centres had humidity levels above 80%. At sea, east to southeast winds tend to 15 knots, moderate seas. Turning to tides, low tide is at 9.08 pm with the next high tide at 3.23 tomorrow morning and sunrise is at 6.12. For tomorrow, cloudy with some showers over the most places with isolated thunderstorms. The outlook for Saturday, some showers and isolated thunderstorms over most places. Our shot of the day, a beautiful scene captured in Daku Savu Savu by Krishnal Gounder. That's the weather for now and it's back to Edwin. In Fiji and Pulse we ask, what's the first thing you'll do when COVID-19 restrictions are lifted? When the restrictions are lifted, I would take my wife out on a small break, uh, just a getaway. It's been lockdown, lockdown every now and then, so we've been apart for some time now. I will take a tour around with you. I'll take a tour to the west to go and visit my dad. Recapping our main stories, deaths of fully vaccinated people explained. COVID battle requires global effort and islanders ignoring COVID safe protocols. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should anyone found cheating the system for government assistance be charged? Visit our FBC News website to take part and be sure to send us newsworthy pictures and videos fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via social media. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Mandala.